Welcome to section 4.3. Okay, gentle people, we're going to continue our discussion on solutions. The thing to remember here is that solutions are a mixture. And if I have a mixture, that means there is no fixed composition. So we have our solute dissolve in our solvent, but one of the things we have to do is we have to describe the components of our solution. And so what we're going to talk about is something called concentration. So concentration is going to tell me the amount of solute and solvent I have in relation to each other. Now there's various ways to express concentration. For now, we're going to focus on the most common one, and that is called molarity. So if I want to look at molarity, what I'm going to look at is the moles of my solute over the liters of solution. So I want you guys to pay attention to this bottom because it is often confused. It is not liters of solvent, it is liter of solution. Now to abbreviate molarity, what we're going to do is we're going to put our chemical compound in brackets. So the way that I would read this is I have HCl and I want the concentration of HCl. And in this case, I'm going to say that it is 1.0 M and M is the abbreviation for molarity. So what this means is I have 1.0 moles of HCl per liter of solution. So let's go ahead and talk about some nuances with this, especially when we talk about writing things on bottles. So if you go into a laboratory, what you might see is a bottle labeled 3.0 molar CaCl2 aqueous. Now the first thing you got to understand is that this does not physically exist. There's an implication when we use the empirical formula of an ionic compound followed by aqueous. And that implication is, is if the substance is soluble, it is going to break up into its components. And what I mean by that is CaCl2 aqueous really is the dissociation of calcium chloride in water, meaning that I have Ca plus plus two things of chloride ions, and both of these things are aqueous. So what does it mean when I say that there's three molar of CaCl2? Well, what it doesn't mean is that I have three moles of this in solution. Because this doesn't exist anymore, this has broken up. It is broken up into calcium ions and chloride ions. But what I can do is I can tell you the concentration or the molarity of calcium and chloride in solution. So if I write 3.0 moles of CaCl2, over one liter of solution, I know based on the dissociation reaction that for every one mole of CaCl2, I will generate one mole of Ca2 plus ions. So that means the moles of CaCl2 cancel out, and what I get out is 3.0 moles of Ca2 plus over one liter of solution. Or in other words, I'm 3.0 molar of calcium 2 plus. So I'm going to put that up here, 3.0 molar calcium 2 plus. Now we can do this for the anion as well. So again, we're going to go ahead and start out with what's written on the bottle. We can use our dissociation reaction to set up a mole fraction. And so in this case, for every one mole of calcium chloride, I get two moles of chloride ions. I can cancel things out, and I'm left with six moles of chloride ions over one liter of solution. And remember, six moles over one liter, well, that's 6.0 molar chloride ions. So we can write this over here, 6.0 molar chloride ions, and here's the take home message for this slide. So when you have a bottle that's written as 3.0 molar calcium chloride, remember that this breaks up into solution. And so this 
is really what the contents of your solution is. That 3.0 is just a label. The reality is, is I have three molar of calcium ions and six molar in chloride ions. So with that said, why don't you go ahead and use this as your quiz. After you're done, mark the right answer. Tell me if I see a bottle that has 5.0 molar potassium sulfate, what is the true contents of that bottle? So ladies and gentlemen, what you can see is that if we were to break this up, I would only get one sulfate. So sulfate to K2SO4, one to one ratio, so in solution, I should have five molar of my sulfate ion. Now, the other thing is that potassium. And for every potassium sulfate, I'll get two potassiums. So I'm going to double the amount or double the moles that I produce. So in this case, I'll have 10.0 molar of potassium ions. So again, this is what's in solution when I have this as my label. All right, gentle people, the last thing I wanna cover here is something that you're gonna use all throughout chemistry, and that is dilutions. What you have to understand is when you buy chemicals, they only come in certain concentrations. For example, hydrochloric acids typically comes in the most concentrated form around 12, a six molar and a one molar. If you need to use any kind of concentration of HCl that is outside what manufacturers produce, you have to do the dilution. And what I mean by dilution is, is you are going to add water to your solution. So let's think about this. If I have something that's six molar HCl, that means I have six moles of HCl per one liter of solution. Now, if I add water to this, note it does not change the top. Six moles is always going to be six moles. So one key thing to remember during a dilution is the initial amount of moles is going to equal the final amount of moles. However, if I add water, well, water is my solvent and that is part of my solution. So the bottom, or my denominator is going to get bigger. So I'm going to change the composition of my mixture or my solution, and I'm going to get a new concentration. So let's go ahead and think about this thought experiment. Let's say I go to my chemical stock room and I have a six molar solution of HCl. This is my stock solution. However, I only want a two molar solution of HCl, but I need 50 mils of it. So what I have to ask myself is how much water do I add to the six molar of HCl? So here are my initial conditions and here's the solution I wanna finally make. Now remember what I said before, if I just add solvent, I am not changing the moles of solute. That means that the initial moles that I have equals the final moles. So N initial equals N final, where N is the number of moles of substance. Now what you will note is that if I take molarity, M, and times it by volume, I will get moles. And you can prove this to yourself, is that if you take moles over liters, which are the units of molarity, times volume, which is usually in liters, well, you can cancel liters out, and then you are left with moles. Now, if this is the case, we can use this equation right here. And this is the dilution equation. M1V1 equals M2V2. Now, you guys are going to use this all over the place. So it's a good idea to get comfortable with this. So let's go ahead and run this calculation out. So let's go ahead and follow the stipulations of that last question. The first thing I'll note is I have a six molar solution of HCl. Now I want to know what volume I have to use of this six molar solution. Now at the end of my dilution, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to make a two molar solution and I want 50 milliliters or in this case, 0 
liters of solution. So what I can do now is I can solve for V1, and what I get is 0 0.0167 liters worth of solution. Now, I'm going to tell you guys right now, you could have run this calculation using milliliters. So 6.0 molar V1 equals 2 molar. But instead of putting it in terms of liter, we're going to put 50 mLs. Now, the only thing you have to worry about is if you input your volume in milliliters, then your answer is going to come out in milliliters. So if I do this calculation out, I get 16.7 milliliters, and you guys can see that you can convert from one to the other, and that these are the same volume. Now what I want you to understand is how you're gonna use this information. So what you're gonna do is you are going to go ahead and get a beaker or a flask. You're gonna go ahead and put in 16.7 milliliters of your six molar HCl. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna dilute up with water to the 50 milliliter mark. Note, you're not going to add 50 milliliters of water, you're going to dilute up to that line with water. And that's because you want your final volume to be 50 milliliters. All right, Chem1A, I hope that made sense and remember to stay safe.